Thank you all so, oh, that's louder than I expected. Thank you all so much for having me here today. Uh, first off, my e-reader, I get, did get another one after donating it. I'm not going to be using it today. I'm just going to put it right here, and I need to remember to take it when I go. So I'm going to be talking today about five failures in five minutes, or perhaps even less. And I want to share with you, today is my 100th day on the job. I got here June 2nd. And so I'm very excited to be able to celebrate that with you all, especially talking about an area that is near and dear to my heart and that is failure, which is a bit of a head-scratcher in terms of why that's near and dear to my heart. So, Switzerland, brand Switzerland, is about precision, perfection, performance, and it's working. In the United States, I even have my Swiss Army knife in my bag. I have my Swiss watch. Raise your hand if you have a Swiss watch, right? It's going over quite well around the globe. It's one of the most popular items that you can get anywhere across the globe. Switzerland just topped the competitiveness charts for the World Economic Forum for the sixth time and tops the innovation charts and has at or less than 3% unemployment averaged across the whole country. Everything is going really, really well here. Failure? is not a part of the DNA. <laughs> so you have to question my diplomatic skills in coming here and talking about failure. But I get a lot of questions, because the US form of innovation is very different than the Swiss form of innovation. And a lot of people are going to Silicon Valley, Silicon Alley, Seattle, Boston, Austin, Chicago, trying to find out where might they be able to find their dreams and bring them to fruition. Well, one of the things to keep in mind is that in bringing those dreams to fruition in the United States, we have a different attitude towards failure. Now, who am I to say whether the Swiss approach is right or wrong? Frankly, again, pretty darn good numbers. And who am I to say that those numbers aren't great and aren't going to continue? But I can share with you what's happening in my country. Before I left, a couple of my friends who are VCs, venture capitalists, said to me, for startups, fail fast and fail cheaply. Now, I don't know if they were talking about my position as ambassador or about startups, but we'll see by the end of my talk. But that means it's an interesting thing because it's sort of anathema to the Swiss way of being. You want to stick with something and have it succeed, whereas this is saying, if it's not going right, bail and move on. But the key thing is, how do you learn from it? How do you learn and grow from it? So in terms of the attitudes towards failure, raise your hand, please, if you know somebody or if you yourself have experienced a business failure or an academic failure or something like that. Raise your hand. So it's a pretty good group here in terms of having that experience and pretty, I'm impressed, what should I say? In the United States, there is no stigma associated with it it would be almost 100% of the people who would raise their hands who have or know somebody who has experienced it. There's no stigma. You get, up, get back up on your feet and you keep going. It's an important way to learn. In fact, there's a whole new area of education that's focusing on building up, in the United States, they're calling it grit. How, instead of saying, oh, are you okay? Let's help you make this all right, sort of this sort of helicopter parent or the hovering teacher to make everything okay, it's, oh, that's too bad. What did you learn? It's a very different approach, and it's an important way to learn. And the other key thing here is it's not just about the individuals who are creating businesses or who are creating stuff. It's also about those who are funding it and fueling it. So let's say you were a funder, an investor in something, and you happen to have an investment that failed. In the United States, you wouldn't necessarily be seen as a failure yourself. In fact, a number of the investors that I know will look at a portfolio of 10 businesses and say, I expect five to seven of them to fail. And in fact, I hope that one of them is a major success. And this is across the board when you talk to venture capitalists and what they expect in the United States. Pretty amazing statistic that way. So what I'm going to do right now is share with you five different failures or individuals who have experienced failure who, again, are kind of head scratchers because you wouldn't think of them as failures. And I'm going to go through it in the next 20 seconds. Ready? Let's go. Abraham Lincoln, one of our greatest presidents, failed in business, didn't get elected to a number of positions, became one of our greatest presidents. 
Steve Jobs started Apple, got fired in 1985. They said, stick a fork in him, turn him over, he's done. Then he came back, developed Next, developed Pixar, one of the greatest animation motion pictures, motion picture companies, according to my kids. And then, of course, he came out with the iPhone, the iPad, and has completely changed how we interact with devices. Next up, Lady Gaga, Stefani Joanne Angelina Germanata. She is not an overnight success by any stretch of the imagination as much as people may think she is. Instead, she started performing in bars when she was 14. She got a deal first with Def Jam, who dropped her, otherwise known as fired. And then she signed to another label because she was persistent and stuck with it. And then within a year of going with that label, she came out with a Grammy-nominated record. Her career's been pretty darn good ever since. Michael Jordan, perhaps one of the greatest basketball legends of all time, he was cut from his basketball team in high school. Went home and cried in his bedroom. Over the course of his career, he shares this with a lot of people. He missed 9,000 shots. He lost 300 games. In 26 games, he was the one putting up that last final shot, and he missed. It is through his failures that he has been able to succeed. Last but not least among the five is Ben Ha. Ben is a dear friend of mine. And Ben came to the United States as an immigrant, worked with his dad and his parents in janitorial services and restaurant services. A year after he graduated from college, he started a web analytics business that 18 months later failed. He was so depressed he could barely leave his room. Within nine years after having worked for an entrepreneur, when he finally got out of his room, he then received $30 million to start the Cheeseburger Network. Raise your hand if you have a cat. Nobody has cats in here? Seriously? I'm a dog person, but I'm good with that. So LOL Cats is a big cat fan in the back there. Love that. LOL Cats is his business uh, as a part of the Cheeseburger Network. And uh, he's, in fact, allergic to cats. I'll just point that out. They see over 20 million people a month, and now he's created a whole way, new way for people to approach news. This is an individual who failed dramatically, and I recommend watching his FailCon video from the San Francisco FailCon. I'm going to finish out with two key quotes here. Failure is just another word for growing. And it's only failure if you don't get back up. So I know that I come in with my United States attitude towards failure, and Lord knows I've been through my own ups and downs, and that's over a glass of wine that we'll discuss that separately. But I encourage all of you not to look at things that may knock you on your heels or on your you-know-what as failure, but as opportunities to learn and grow. Thank you very much.